This conference will now be recorded. Hello, my name is Tom Gioelli, and I'm a business analyst and consultant for Ledgeview Partners. And today we're going to be discussing one of the important features of the field service application for Dynamics 365, and that is functional locations. Now, one of the most important aspects of the field service application is the ability to identify where a work order needs to be performed. In order to understand how functional locations can help us better define and give us more granular information about this location, it's important to understand where different address information is stored within field service and how it's pulled into a work order. Now, by default, when you install the field service application and you go to take a look at your account records, you may see a few different fields than you see if you're already using Dynamics 365 for sales. Most importantly for our video today is a service address. Now this service address is the location where it is assumed all work orders for this customer will need to be performed. For most cases, such as a company is like Ledgeview Partners, this is relatively straightforward as we have one building and one single location where someone might come to perform service. However, Oftentimes, having a single address does not work for customers who possibly are large entities or groups, such as a university, or who may have locations outside of their particular business area. For this next example, we're going to be taking a look at a college or university, more specifically, the University of Iowa. In this case, we're going to pretend that we are a company that helps service and maintain aspects of recreational and sports facilities. Now, the University of Iowa is one of our clients and customers, and we do have a service address or a primary address for them, which is located in downtown Iowa City in one of their academic buildings. However, when we are scheduling work to be performed at this particular school, it's not going to be happening on East Jefferson Street in downtown Iowa City. Instead, that work is going to need to be performed at any one of the different athletic facilities that we service, such as the football stadium, the basketball arena, or at some of our tennis facilities. It's in this particular example that functional locations become extra helpful in helping us determine where our tech needs to be going and how long it's going to take them to get there. Now it's important to understand first that functional locations are a separate table within the Dynamics 365 field service environment. You can find them if you go to the service area on your left-hand navigation, and you'll see it underneath assets. Functional locations can serve a number of different purposes. Um, we'll take a look at what an existing one looks like and then what it looks like to create a new one of these records. To start off with, let's evaluate our football stadium on campus. Kinnick Stadium is where the football team plays. And in this case, we have our specific address for the stadium. The latitude and longitude was provided automatically by the system. And then we need to tie this functional location to the account that we're talking about, in this case, the University of Iowa. For those of you that may see this subgrade over here and take note of that, this is showing that you can have a functional location associated with more than one account. This is a native many-to-many -many relationship between the two tables. Now, creating a new functional location is very straightforward as well. Right now, we already have our football stadium and basketball arena in the system, but let's say we want to add in our tennis and recreation complex. I'm going to go ahead and create a new functional location. I will give it our name, and then I'm going to type in the service address. Now, if I type this in down at the bottom here, you'll see that the system is going to attempt to auto fill in the information based off of addresses that it can find. In this case, we have our 2020 Prairie Meadow Drive in Iowa City. I can select that and save this record. And the system has automatically added in the latitude and longitude of this address for me. Right now, we have a functional location, but it's not tied to any of our accounts. What I need to do now is add an existing account record, choose the University of Iowa, and click Add. At this point, it's as easy as that, we have a functional location created for the University of Iowa for the tennis and recreation facility. 
Now let's take a look at what this looks like from the account side of the equation. If I go out to my accounts and I find the University of Iowa, in the field service account form, you'll see a tab along the top called assets and locations. This tab utilizes a custom control uh, that comes out of Vox as a part of the field service application to show a tree view of all of the different functional locations associated with this account. In our case, we can see the basketball arena, the football stadium, and here's the new record that we just created, the tennis and recreation facility. Now, one of the great things about functional locations is that not only can you see them in this tree view here, but we can also create additional nested levels depending on the level of detail that's needed for our text. In this particular case, going to the stadium or the basketball arena is pretty straightforward. But for our tennis and recreation facility, we actually have a number of different courts that we service. Each one has different assets on it, and we need to keep track of which particular court or part of the complex that we're going to. In that case, I can create a new functional location record directly from this tree view. So if I click on the Hawkeye Tennis and Recreation Facility and on the small meatball menu to the right, I'm gonna add in a new location. I'm gonna say we're looking at court one. It becomes a child record of our parent location, which is the Tennis and Recreation Facility because we created it under the context of that record. And what's really interesting is the service address. Now, court one at this tennis facility doesn't have its own separate address. Really, it's just a part of that complex. So in this case, we can exclude adding an address in, and this functional location will inherit the address of its parent record. So if I hit save and close, we will now see that we have an extra dropdown underneath the Hawkeye Tennis and Recreation Facility for our court one. Now I can come in here, maybe add in a court two with the same deal. And then I could even go one level deeper if I wanted to and say the north side of the court. You'll see that this tree view continues to expand and allow you to see those nested records underneath each one of them. Each time that we add in one of the child functional locations, if no address is selected, it will inherit the address from the first available parent record. So in this case, when we create a work order, whether we pick the tennis and recreation facility or court one or the north side of court one, it's all gonna come down to the same address that we have on this ultimate parent record. So let's take a look at what this looks like on an actual work order. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new work order for the University of Iowa. And I'm gonna create this first without a functional location. We're gonna create it just based off of the account record. Now, once this record has been created, we're gonna to go to our location tab. And what we'll see here for the address in our location is the service address from the account. East Jefferson Street in downtown Iowa City is where we're located. Now let's go back because really this isn't where we want our tech to go. So when we're doing our booking and scheduling, we don't want them taking a look at distance to this location and don't want their app taking them there. We actually wanna go out to our tennis facility. In this case, I'm gonna go back to my main page and find the lookup for the functional location. I can now pick the Hawkeye Tennis and Recreation Facility. And once I save the record, the location of this work order has automatically updated to the other side of the Iowa River to the sports complex, which we can see right here. Now I can continue to make changes to this. So I can say that we are going to Kinnick Stadium instead and our location will update to show the football stadium right there. And then to give you one more example, let's take a look at one of those child locations underneath the tennis and recreation facility. You will notice that all of the available choices here in the lookup are filtered to only show functional locations that are a part of this account or are associated with this account. So in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and pick court one which is a part of our tennis facility. 
and save the record. And what we will now see is that location has been updated back over to our tennis facility. So even though when we take a look at this record here, even though I did not define an address on this exact location, it is inheriting that information from the parent functional location. Now, the benefit of using some of these functional locations is that you can get much more granular with the information that you're providing to your tech. It gives you a great way to be able to categorize, especially for some of those large customers, what specific locations or what specific areas you've been going into surface, but you do have to balance that against the additional maintenance of creating and maintaining your functional location table, which does take additional effort unless you have some sort of automated integration built into place with another system. Now, the example that I gave here was very helpful for a large sprawling location like a university campus that has lots of different locations where some of our techs might need to travel. However, functional locations can also be helpful in a few other situations. Uh, number one, you may have a customer who is a company, let's say a construction company that you're working with, but you're not going to be doing service at the com construction company's office. Rather, you create functional locations for each of the different construction projects that they might be working on and that you might be sending your technician out to. So it could be a random latitude and longitude that you want to provide or multiple addresses outside of that particular account and location. Another great example that I want to take a look at is for a much smaller, much more granular view of locations. Well, we're going to take a look at our account records here again, and we're going to pull up LedgeView Partners, our first example. So unlike the University of Iowa, LedgeView Partners has one building in Appleton, Wisconsin. However, in that one building, we might have techs who need to go to several locations inside of the facility itself. So rather than having an entirely different latitude and longitude, we may have functional locations that refer to specific areas within the building. One of the most common examples I've seen of this is for an IT team who needs to be able to track or understand, especially where some of the larger hardware is located within a building or a facility. So in this case, when we take a look at our assets and locations, we have functional locations for the break room and for the server room. In the server room, we can break this down even further and we can have rack one, rack two, or rack three. The idea behind this is that when we create the work order for our technician, we want them to have all of the possible information there and available so that they can quickly and easily identify and understand exactly where they need to go. So rather than them needing to have someone type in the information that you need to go to the server room in the northwest side of the building and go to rack two, we can instead specify that we're going to rack two, which is a child record of the server room, which is a part of LedgeView Partners, and they can have that information directly available to them. This also gives us the benefit of being able to say, maybe the tech comes into that uh, server room and says, hey, rack two wasn't closed properly and locked. Uh, security procedures weren't in place. Well, we can very quickly and easily then see what was the last work order that performed some sort of action in rack two of the server room. So whether you're taking a look at functional locations as sprawling across an entire city or all the way down to a shelf in a specific room, it gives you a much more granular level of control and can be a huge benefit for organizations as they work their way through understanding where a tech needs to go for a work order and being able to properly define and categorize that information. A very related topic to functional locations are assets. They're tied in relatively closely. However, we will not be going into that in today's video, but it is important to understand that assets can oftentimes be a part of these functional locations and also help give additional information and context into the service being provided. With that, I thank you for taking the time to listen to this video here today. If you do ever have any questions, would like to get support, take a look at our library, get a demo, talk about field service at all, please don't hesitate to contact us at LedgeView Partners. And thank you and hope everyone has a great day.